Hi everyone, I'm Sandra Ingerman and welcome to the Shaman's Cave. And I'm Renee Barbo, and we are really happy to be here with you. Can we, I think we should make our little announcement just in case we, about our divination class on, on yeah. November 12th. Yeah, um, Renee and I decided to do a one day uh, class for 30 people so that we can all interact together. And I, I really love teaching divination of how to go to the spirits, what are the best kinds of questions to ask, and what are the healing words that you use when you share your journey with your client. And, and of course, Renee can speak for herself, but she's a master d d diviner with uh, the wind whistle. So we're going to do a class together on what is divination, how to ask a question, um, and how to interpret and how to speak to a client in a modern day psychologically sophisticated culture so that you're bringing them to healing, you're not traumatizing them more. <laughs> uh, when I saw that you had written that in the description, I was so excited because when I first learned to, you know, my shamanic practices, I think I traumatized some people. I had to really learn how to buffer what I saw from what I told people and, you know, really learn to go to the spirits to ask, is this appropriate to tell them now, ever, or is it something that they're going to need to explore on their own? And that's such a key and important part of delivering the message and something that I have to keep myself in check with all the time. So the, the part that I'm going to be teaching is that the winds have given me some divination tools, you know, using the wind whistle and and, and ways of um, seeing colors and, and things like that that are really helpful when you're working with clients. So you can go over to our shamanstv.com and register. And like Sandra said, we're only taking 30 people. And that doesn't mean 30 plus 10. It means 30 people who know how to journey, who, you know, would enjoy this type of work with us. Yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun and fabulous workshop and there'll be plenty of time for practice to mm -hmm. and asking questions. So we're excited, uh, Renee and I, this is the first time we're going to teach together and um, we're very excited about this topic. So absolutely. And, and actually, this topic that we're teaching kind of goes into the topic that we're going to be talking about today. Because when you go divining into other people's space, it's always good to be protected for yourself. So we thought we would talk about protection today. Yeah, absolutely. So um, <clears throat> I, I have different opinions on this, and it really depends on what our starting point is. Um, I, I was teaching a workshop and um, we had this unbelievable snow, snowstorm. Uh, nobody could get home and nobody, the staff could get to us. So we were really stuck in this room together. And one of my students who was a friend at the time, she could not stop asking the question about how you deal with psychic attack. and. In my workshops, I don't let people talk about psychic attack or evil because when you talk about anything, you call in that energy. And I keep clear spaces in my workshops. So I did the best I could to answer her question and we did a lot of private talking, but oh my God, she would not let it go. So I put on my boots that night, the snow's up to my thighs. Um, I find some way to get back to my room. And I have this really powerful dream where Jesus came to me in the dream. And you know that image where his hands are out, lights just flowing. And he said, um, if you are filled with this kind of light, nothing can ever come in to harm you, which is true. But that takes a lot of intention to hold that light. And unfortunately, the culture that we live in, we react so fast. We don't take time to what would be the best protective thing for my body to do. And so the important thing about protection to understand, and we actually advertised um, my book, How to Heal Toxic Thoughts, which is all about this. and. And you really helped me out because it really jumped on 
on Amazon, and then my publisher wanted a new book from me. So, <laughs> um, so thank you. Um, but I write so many different ways in there to to work. But it really is about staying conscious that people are projecting onto you, and you're projecting onto people. And that's where that's the bottom line of where psychic attack is coming from. But as I've shared on many shows, so I'm not going to go into it deeply, um, from a shamanic point of view, everything you send comes back to you three times. So I don't think we should be worried so much about the psychic attacks coming to us. I think we should worry more about what we're doing mm -hmm. that is ending up hurting us even more because there are so many ways to protect yourself if you see that you're being psychically attacked, using mirrors, uh, using colors around you, transfiguring, um, holding the intention. But, um, but, but what you do and your behavior, that's gonna take a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happened to me recently where I received a disturbing message and I actually spent the day in the garden, you know, thinking about people who I had hurt, hurt bad enough that they would want me to, to suffer. And I really went through and, uh, you know, that Ono Pono, I never say it right. You know, the, the I love you, please forgive me, I'm sorry. And really looking and doing a soul scrub of what types of behaviors that I've done in the last couple of years or so that would, that would, affect somebody you know i mean you get the, the random ones like on facebook and then you get some more personalized ones yeah i had one yesterday and it was like okay to cancel clear and delete but because it had nothing to do with me but this one was felt personal and so i really spent a whole day looking at you know where had i overstepped my boundaries where had i diminished somebody where had i you know hurt them spiritually and this could be in a in unconscious thought word or deed but that where was I not clean enough that that I would be projecting that out so that it could come back to me that way and sending it all back with love and and, and like Sandra said you know I put the no trespass all of the other stuff that you can do but to really get a soul scrub for myself to see that I might have hurt somebody along the way which we were talking about um on we were talking about that about um about the divination, about what words that we use. Whereas I think that I might have been boosting somebody up along in their career, they might have felt totally diminished. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a really important point because I have a chapter in How to Heal Toxic Thoughts on taking the high road. Mm -hmm. and, uh, taking the high road is stop blaming people for psychically attacking you. <laughs> Taking the high road is going in and seeing what behavior that you're projecting out that's being mirrored back to you. And that that takes a lot of maturity because when we start feeling like an attack is coming to us, we're ready to go to war. But it, we are working towards a different evolution of consciousness. So why not even try and go in and see is there some behavior that's getting mirrored back to me? Mm -hmm. Take the high road, take mm -hmm. the high road and see what happens. Because there are thousands of ways to protect yourself if you feel like you're being attacked. But uh, changing your behavior so that you're a different presence in the world, that's what we're all working towards right now. Yeah, I, and I believe that so like many years ago, there was a time that I felt I was under a, a lot of um, a lot of attack and I was being out of integrity in so many areas of my life that I think that, you know, whether or not the attack was real, I really had to do some deep, deep, deep soul searching and it actually took a couple of years and a lot of change. And, you know, we, we, that's the hard part. We'd rather like, okay, let me, you know, send this back with love and, and let me continue to do my bad behaviors or, or you know, not serving me, myself or the community behaviors. I don't think they're bad or good. I think they just are an experience. Still, 
that that getting really clean so that you know that 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 love and that light you were talking about sandra is like that all compassionate love light that you can really emanate out to the world does far more good than than you know sending something back with you know i i think it was hank who always said send it back with your aloha you know your yeah. love and 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 so that but you have to be clear and clean to do that right right all, all the wishing and wanting it isn't making it so it's an act of grace that you come into that equanimity within yourself in order to be that person yeah i find i find myself uh, i'll i'll be transparent here i find myself because i do send everything back with love because i have enough problems right now and i don't need anything else coming at me but i do do it with um i do I don't do it with an open heart. That's what I have to say. I do it with some um, vengeance. It's like, <laughs> I shove this love right up your butt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I found a really subtle layer of it today. And I, it actually happened over a couple of things is these corporations, like the canvas and the price lines, you know, you can find yourself where you could get twisted up is that you think you're like, oh, I'm living the spiritual life and I'm, you know, safe and I'm protective. I've done my wind zips and I'm good to go. And then you get in a fight with a Canva person like who's probably dealing with 100 people and, you know, you're just one automatic letter back. And so it's like it tricks you. Like all of a sudden you're mad at Priceline because they won't, you know, you read it that there's a no refund, but you want your refund. And, and then you like still try to, to move things around and, and and you think that you're being of light or, or of a service and you're not. And it's like, wow, look at how cunning and baffling this clean house sweeping really is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're it, it's amazing what you can talk yourself into of the good that you you're talking yourself into, you know. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, it's it's a real time of truth telling you know, basically this time is bringing us to a time of truth telling. And truth telling also goes into if you feel psychically attacked, who are you psychically attacked that you're feeling psychically attacked? Because in shamanism, there's only oneness. So um, there is no separation. So do we go take the high road? Or do we still do our behavior that is what is affecting the planet right now how much more hate and division do we need i know instead of like and i got to canva i'll just reorder these and tell everyone to throw the first ones away you know what i mean it's just like you know because you and you we when you get into these non-necessary battles you weaken yourself and then you really are open to the person going down the road who's having an angry day just you know lashing some stuff out the window and that you just pick it up and it could it look could come out as just all of a sudden you're in a bad mood or you're tired or you know the i mean it doesn't have to be like oh you know i've been diminished my power but there's just so many ways that we're not in our light and i think that when we're not in our light it's like really good to I don't know, yesterday I was really tired and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go take a nap. So I put my journey, I put on my meditation CD and it was like two minutes in just the, the giving myself permission to go to the neutral, to that void we were speaking about last time is, is just, I'm like, okay, well, I don't need a nap anymore. Yeah. I got up and I went out into the garden, but, but the thing is, is to recognize when you're off, and, and when you're off to stop there, because those are the vulnerable moments. Those are the moments that, you know, those things can creep in. Like I was really tired. So I was, I mean, the silly things is like, okay, I'm feeling under attack. Well, I better watch myself on the ladder and all of these other places because I'm really tired. And really taking the responsibility back to myself. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is a time where, um... You know, those of us who are in the spiritual uh, worlds, this is a time where in some ways we have to let our body rule and we're not used to doing that. 
but um, I know um, I'm speaking to my for myself and maybe I'm projecting onto all of you and I'm sorry if I am, but um, I know that my body has pushed me to, I have drawn a line in the sand and I come first. And if I could tell you how many students I'm in touch with who are going through exactly the same thing, it's, it is a really big issue in that um, we were not taught in this culture to listen to your body and to slow down and stop and take care of its needs. Everything was push, 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 push. And that really happened uh, in the 1920s when the Spanish flu was over. It was all push, 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 push. There was no place for introverts. Everything was extrovert. And now we're kind of coming back to that. A lot of people feel the pandemic's over. Uh, I'm not particularly one of them, but that's okay. Um, but you're seeing that as people are coming back, it's the extrovert. It's, it's, it's how fast can we go? How much can we do? And there's very little listening to the body right now. And that's going to be a real key tool in surviving the coming times. At the Windwalker Fall Retreat, we had an hour after lunch for a sacred rest. Nice. Yeah. And, that would, and then that was built into the schedule. Yeah. I really loved, I never had the courage to do this, but I would love to. Back in the early 90s, so we're going back a long time, there was a, um, a, a Tibetan um, monk who led, um, you know, three, four days retreats at his monastery in upstate New York. And um, part of the program was you had to come uh, for 48 hours beforehand and just sleep. And, mm -hmm. and that, that wasn't that was part of the program that uh, you couldn't say, I don't want to do that. That was part of the program. So I actually, I actually did that at two of my teacher reunions at Ghost Ranch. I had everybody had to come a day early and go to Abiquiu Lake and take naps and swim or go to the lavender farm or just stay in their room and sleep. And it really makes a difference because in shamanic work, you have to show up and, mm -hmm. and how we're taxing our bodies right now, our bodies aren't showing up. So how strong is that work going to be? <laughs> and this may sound off topic, but this is how we protect ourselves. This is totally how we protect ourselves having this human experience. So if you're thinking, well, what does that have to do with, you know, it has everything to do with how you show up every single day, because you need all of you for the, I mean, the winds, I mean, just think about what's happened in the last month with, you know, the storm season is, looks like it's been worse than ever. And these chaotic winds are blowing. So the stronger you can be in this human, you know, this human Cadillac of yours, the better off you're going to be to face these constant changes that we're going to be putting up with and feeling safe and protected as we go forward. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We have to remember that the times are calling for us to really show up body, mind and spirit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think with that's, I think with that's a, we don't have to beat this horse to death. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. probably getting in trouble, but, but the, you know, you, you get the point that it's really a time to take care of yourself so that you can show up in your life and, and you can show up for us by liking us on uh, shamans tv.com and on Facebook and over at YouTube. And cause we want to be here and sit with you and, and share these ideas of wisdom and you know, we would like that reciprocity, that support back from you. Yeah, it would be really wonderful. It would, uh, it would just show your support to us for um, uh, our willingness to show up. And we love you, so we want to show up, but um, we would just like a little support too. So thank you, everybody, and bless you, and goodbye.